We are back. We are back with our second episode of the day. I'm excited. Lisa Russell, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks. Thanks for having me. My, my, my best friend's name is Russell, so I, I appreciate everybody with the last name, Russell. I saw him like, Lisa Russell, we're going to get her on there. Lisa works for a company called Vizier. Let's start off. I mean, we were talking earlier. What do you guys do? <laughs> Vizier. I Busier. would say um, what we do is we are a leader in people analytics. And so we're helping business leaders figure out the impact of their decisions and help them create like a more inclusive and impact, uh, uh, just like a cool place to work by making informed decisions with data is really what it comes down to. So that's a great sales overview. Let's lift yeah. up the hood of the engine a little bit and talk about people analytics. What are some of those key for anyone playing at home? Some folks are in the TA space. Some folks are recruiters, some folks are on the job hunt. When we talk about people analytics, what are some of those metrics that companies are looking at? Yeah, it really depends on uh, the, the role of the person who's looking at the data. And I think that's one of the shifts we're trying to help make is the fact that everyone on like an advisory board, everyone who's in an executive team, anyone who's managing people should actually be looking at data right. and understanding how they can make better decisions to drive not only like satisfaction and inclusion, but also drive revenue in the organization, right? So uh, depending on the roles, it might be like a CEO saying, hey, how do we recruit better talent? Or uh, someone who's in an HR team might be saying like, hey, are people using the benefits that we're offering? A manager might be saying, how do right. I create more inclusive workplaces? Are people, you know, cool with my management style and getting feedback on my that? So, but what, what are those data points, let's go a little bit deeper, what are those data points that a CEO would want to look at? What are some of those key metrics? It's like cost of hire. It's like the speed of hire. It's uh, increasing retention rates. So how long am I keeping people in the roles that they're in? How quickly are they progressing or like moving up in the organization? Does L&D impact that progress? Right. You know, all those types. So of then Vizier is creating a custom dashboard based on what that company needs. Yeah. Different levels of access, obviously. Absolutely. But data points are interesting. Not every company is like, listen, if it's a sales organization, you're going to get those numbers. Yeah. Right. You could look at sales dashboards all day long. You have to, yeah. But what about the qualitative points? How do you measure qualitative points? Like satisfactory, the survey base. Yeah. Give us, give us a um, kind of a, a generic example. Sure. I think one thing that's important to understand is that Vizier as an organization has been around for like 14 years. So like on that side of the business, we have been pulling together disparate data to help anyone in the company make better decisions. And so the data that they're like using could be anything from any system. So it could be CRM data, it could be uh, payroll data, it could be um, engagement data. But on my side of the business, when we're talking about like embedded analytics, we're coming into partners like found, um, we're coming into partners like a lot of the folks that you see on the floor today. And we're help, we're saying, hey, what data do you have available? And how can we light up analytics that's going to help not only right. help your customers make better decisions, but also show the value of your platform. So when we talk about qualitative and quantitative data, a lot of it has to do with just like, what are you sitting on? We'll, we'll, right. we'll, so we'll figure are, it out. Are, are sitting on gold mines. They yeah. don't even realize what they have. So oh if you have to come in and say, do an audit analysis, here's what you're working with, and the aha moments, right? That's what we live for ourselves. Exactly. When we can bring a genuine, authentic aha moment. Yeah. And I want to talk about some of your aha moments in your, your career, okay. actually. Sure. Um, tell us what you did before. Because okay. you worked in, correct me, keep me straight here, nonprofits, inclusion is a big part of your background. It is. And now you're in this function. Yeah. How did you ensure from your career path perspective, yeah. how, how did you get here? I love the question. Uh, I would say to start, like, I consider myself a social impact entrepreneur. And to me, what that means is that I am motivated to see an increasing number of, like, business leaders and people in power um, taking on the, the opportunity or the challenge to create everyday, you know, um, workplaces that are inclusive, that focus on impact, that focus on purpose and not just driving revenue, right? So uh, previously, I founded a company that was really in the diversity, equity and inclusion space. But okay. what we were trying to demonstrate to business leaders is that like small micro changes and behaviors and in structure within the organization could lead to like quantifiable impact in terms of employee engagement, satisfaction, and, and, and also profitability, right? Yeah. So I did that for six years, really trying to help businesses make the right decisions for their people and employees. Well, let, let's pause on that and, and yeah. dig a little bit deeper because I think it's interesting. Companies, I do you know who Torin Ellis is? Oh, Torin Ellis, yes, of course. So Torin was on my, his episode came out last yes. week and he's like, nothing's worse than these companies that launched DEI and B after the George Floyd. Like that shouldn't be the reason why they do that. So that, that, that you know, it was a PR move and kind of check the box <laughs> yeah. and that's awful. Yeah. But we started to talk about something similar to what you just said are micro changes that make a big difference. It doesn't have to be these grandiose kind of all of a sudden, because that could make a giant ripple in an organizational culture. It's not necessary. Yeah. 
but understanding where those gaps are, small little things here and there, maybe uncovering a company-wide cultural bias mm -hmm. that could be changed one way or another. And biases aren't always race-motivated. Biases come in a lot of different things. I mean, one of the biases that I absolutely hate is like bias. We don't need the same culture of yes men and women yes. and folks there too. So talk about some of these micro. Like the shifts we can make. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about some of these micro things that you've seen in your practice. Sure. Um, I think some of my favorite examples were things um, that I've seen drive impact, and they were things like, hey, based on the information that we have, it looks like women are getting interrupted in meetings a lot. What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would have thought? Um, but, so like little things like that where we're like, if we could just pay attention and put like show folks, hey, like this is happening, maybe pay attention to it. It completely shifts the uh, context of power and collaboration in every single meeting. And so just by bringing awareness to that, we would immediately see, oh, suddenly women are feeling hurt. Right. Suddenly they're contributing more. They're speaking up more. They're impacting the, the pact of like, uh, like innovation in the organization. They're moving up in their careers. They feel like they have momentum. And it's like that, that ripple effect that you're talking about is so easy. And it's literally like, Reverse hey, that ripple. maybe just stop interrupting people. Stop interrupting people. <laughs> that works for men. That works for women. Just listen. There's magic in listening. It's kind of funny you say that. Like, uh, and I always tell the story. I've been doing this for a while. This is 300 and so many million episodes. Early on, someone said to me, it's like 20, 30 episodes ago, I can hear you thinking in your head of the next question. <laughs> yeah. You're not listening to the guest. Oh, my goodness. And if you take a moment and listen, that's when you start to go down the rabbit hole. That's when you become inclusive. That's when, so was it, was it hard for you to go from your own company back to a W2 nine to five gig? Was that, was that a hard shift <laughs> for you? As in, I said, I'm an entrepreneur. I can't even yeah. fathom ever going back to working for a company. Yeah. But like, is, is this that, being recorded? No, I'm just kidding. Is no. this being recorded? <laughs> is that camera recording us? No. Are these mics picking anything up? Never, no. no. Um, no, I think it's a, it's a very valid question. I, I am an entrepreneur speaking of like, I can, you know, see your mind like spinning. It's like, I am that person. I'm always looking to solve problems. I'm very excited to help and support other folks in doing that. I think what I am excited about in this role at Vizier though, and the reason it, it kind of feels entrepreneurial all the same is that my job is essentially walking up to other executives, other founders, other business leaders and saying, Hey, I can help you get to what you envision faster. I can help you unlock revenue through that data. And so I'm basically coming in and being like strategic and building out business strategies with them and helping them make more money. And so I'm kind of just like doing these like consulting moments with a lot of different folks. You're basically an internal consultant. And this is an interesting point out there. Like, listen, it's a crazy job market right now. And I know and you know how hard it is for someone who's been a long entrepreneur to be like, I can't fathom going back to it. But there are opportunities like this when you can leverage that consultant mindset. Yeah. You can relate to them because you are an entrepreneur exactly. and you're not coming in. That's your unique sales value prop. Ah, <laughs> and that's and that and there's also the stability in there. So it's kind of a nice thing too. What's um, what are some of these cool things? We'll walk the floor here. Listen, there's two thousand boots, which is mind-boggling. This is massive. Like I, I haven't even. Walk to the other side. I won't go there. I'm scared. I don't even want to know what's happening. You won't make it back. You'll get lost. And I know it probably looks like a lot of the same, right? I'll just be like, I'll get lost. But your ears are open. Yeah. Your eyes are open. What are you hearing and seeing that's getting you excited on this floor? Mm. Well, I think uh, we're seeing an increasing trend of like folks who do one thing really, really well are saying, hey, we can't just do this one thing. We need to do a lot more in order to like mm. be valuable to our customers. And so there's a lot more collaborations. There's a lot more potential acquisitions. There's a lot more folks who are trying to uh, like use other folks' data to like empower right. their data. And so I think that increasingly we're seeing this market um, look at the big picture of like what's possible as opposed to just doing the one task on repeat. And I, I think that if you walk the floor, that's what you're going to see is people are trying to, trying to just expand uh, and do oh. more. And, that's exciting. Any any kind of like red flags here? Are you seeing like companies? Well, one of mine is like trying to wedge AI in when you don't really need it. Oh man, that's exactly like, where my mind goes. Too. Like when companies change their their name to oh now we're podcast side AI. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Why did Adam change it to oh because he wanted to check the box and get oh we're an AI company. Yeah, particularly for those folks who are in that stage of like raising capital, they really feel that pressure to throw AI on a slide deck, right? I. I mentored a, a, a cohort of 12 startup founders in the HR tech space on Friday. What a day. But um, it was one of the things that I was like flagging is the fact that 
uh, hey, you, you mentioned that you were powered by AI or that you're doing something with AI. Tell me more about that. And, and just like trying to understand if there's a bit of maturity around how they're thinking about it. And also like if the use case is something that's necessary for their really business case. Exactly. And so I think most folks, they need to understand what they do and understand the metrics of how they do that before they can use AI to scale. And so like things like re recruiting, it's like, unless you know how many, um, you know, job positions like a recruiter can fill per year already with their current processes, you can't slap AI and then know what the difference is going to be or if it's actually valuable to you. Right, so. like, don't just slap AI and say, we're doing AI for sake. The question that I like to ask anyone is, where is your data coming from? Yeah. And what are you going to use the AI for? Yeah. And how are you, how are you keeping that data uh, and managing it in an ethical way. Right. Safe, and not putting secure, things at risk. how are you auditing that data? Yeah. yeah. That was interesting, I had a guest on um, yesterday and I'm bringing there because my coffee hasn't, my second coffee hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> but data security and data, where that data comes from is critical. How are you a busier utilizing AI technology in, how are you guys utilizing it? Yeah. Great question. Uh, well, let's keep it simple. A little bit different than a lot of other folks might assume. I think a lot of folks are using AI for like things like chatbots or you know uh, functionality like that that we're all familiar with seeing. Uh, for us, uh, we are instead using it to understand the questions that people are asking and to make it easier for them to like receive the analytics and data that they need to to answer that question. So, as an example, you know, our, ours is like you know, educated by a lot of LLMs, like trained by a lot of LLMs, but it exists so that we're, we're not training it on our customer data. We're just like training it on our data model. Meaning if we're saying, um, hey, who's most at risk at leaving my organization in the next 90 days? What our AI is going to do, it's called B. What B is going to do is say, this is what I understand they're asking. These are the relevant data points for that. Here's a chart that might show that information and ways that you could filter and organize that information to dig deeper. And so it'll spit that back, kind of like a report. Uh, and so we're using it more to help folks who aren't confident using data, who aren't confident navigating analytics, who don't really know what chart to pull up to answer a question so that they can get to that information faster, but do less. And so it's just, you know, it's, it's all about, um, you know, streamlining the like thing they're already doing. Make you more efficient. Yeah. Right. And come up with that. I always say too, like it boils down to a couple of things. And I've said it ad nauseum. Use AI as a tool, not a crutch. But also kind of I'm workshopping this idea in my head of how do you use AI as a thought starter? Mm. And like your support, like yeah. it goes back to that old little Microsoft, the, the clippy, right? Yeah. Like the paper oh, clip. The like that was the OG like <laughs> AI, right? Like that, that was it. What's, uh, what's keeping you up at night these days? Oh, what's keeping me up at night? Um, well, as a salesperson, you know, I'm just always trying to close deals. So like certainly that's a thing. Always. <laughs> but, sales. Always be <laughs> selling. Always doing it, exactly. Um, but aside from that, I think um, I am just, I, I think that I'm really still trying to figure out like how to, to your point about entrepreneurship, how to really give back and like help put folks like who are early stage founders, like on the right path um, and help them like use data in the right ways. And so to me, it's all about like mentorship, like giving back to community, helping them see that like, you know, you don't have to learn all the lessons the hard way. Like right. you are not going to be able to build the, the infrastructure out of the box in a mm -hmm. year's time. So just like providing people shortcuts and like helping folks get further than, you know, I did in six years. <laughs> and, I, and I love that mindset, guys. It's, it's, it's full circle. Sharing means caring, have an abundancy mindset because it always comes back to you. You don't have to hoard it. There's so many, I mean, if you look around this room right here, I mean, I could look in just, in just my eyesight, I could see competitors across from each other. I mean, we're not reinventing anything new here. No, right? and they all have the same problems. It's either Challenges. payroll, hiring, Benefits, payments, yeah. recruiting, staffing, like we're, we're at a conference here and there's a, there's a lot of competition here and learn from each other. Exactly. There's Community a lot. is so important. Authenticity often as well. So it's like, why why show up and just like put on a face that you have something that you don't and or um, that you're solving a problem that you haven't quite figured out, right? I feel like a lot of folks are just like really pushing forward things like that are more ideas still. And it's like, let's just be real about where we're at and what we can do with our technology right, right and now. And is this a problem that really needs to be solved? Are you creating, <laughs> are you creating a problem? So let's let's wrap it up and, and bring it home here. And let me go back to some like uh, more traditional pause cast kind of questions for everybody. Cause I, I want to get that perspective. We give a lot of advice. We hear a lot of advice. We give a lot of advice. But what is that golden piece of advice given to you? that you take action on every day? Mm. Um, I think lately what's been top of mind for me is um, transparency. I have had um, many experiences, I think, in my career where I didn't trust my gut around whether people were showing up in a way that I could trust. 
And so I think what I'm excited about in this role and in, in the currently just trying to encourage other folks to pay attention to is just how much information you have access to, how much do you know what's going on in your organization, is there a sense of transparency, uh, and, and really just like orienting towards trust um, in, in both like community and at work and, and what, you're, what you're committing your time to. That is sage advice. That is absolutely sage advice. I want to thank Lisa Russell for joining us. Hey, Lisa, where can folks find you? Where can they connect? Where can they learn more? Yeah, definitely come uh, check out Vizier.com. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about data analytics, people analytics, we'd love to chat. And connect with Lisa on LinkedIn. Is that cool? Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love that. Find her. Let's do it. Thank you so much for joining yes. me today.